Blessings on thee, little man, barefoot boy with cheek of tan, with thy turned up pantaloons and thy merry whistle tunes, with thy red lip, redder still, kissed by strawberries on the hill, with the sunshine on thy face, through thy torn brim's jaunty grace, from my heart I give thee joy, I was once a barefoot boy. John Hale out of prison this week. And that's why you wanted to talk to Mrs. Hale? Yes. Maybe she won't be so glad to see him after his four years in prison, and I figured he might need a friend when he got out. Oh. Okay, Dad, I'm ready. When Henry gets back, you'll see that he gets a nice warm meal, won't you, Mother? You bet. I'll take care of him. Bye. Bye. Mom, you watch Terry so he won't come after us. I want to talk with Mrs. Hale. You stay here and get those eggs ready. Oh, Mrs. Hale. Oh, well, how do you do, Mr. Whitaker? Hello, Mrs. Hale. I, I wanted to talk to you for a minute. Yes, only I'm in a bit of a hurry. Driving Kenneth back to the academy. Yes, but it's about John. About his coming home soon. Uh, Kenneth, run over there and say how do you do to Billy. Yes, Mother. I won't be needing any poultry or eggs today. You see, I'm closing up the house, going away for a while. Going away? Well, I thought with John getting out, uh, coming home, that you'd be driving up there to the prison to welcome him. I don't expect to go up there. Hi. Hi. What's the matter? Doesn't your old man have enough money to buy his shoes? Only softies wear shoes in the summertime, except on Sundays. Didn't make you mad, did I? No, I shouldn't. Will you shake on it? Why, sure. What, you gonna do anything about it? Why don't you try taking a crack at me? I was asked not to fight. Besides, I might spoil your pretty boy clothes. I'd like nothing better. You're afraid. Come on, take a poke at me. You mean that? I dare you. I double dare you. <laughs> That's jujitsu, scientific wrestling. I learned it from my instructor's academy. I bet I can lick anybody.
Boy, stop that. Get out from there. Make them stop fighting. Well, I'll let them fight it out, Mrs. Hale. It'll do them good. Stop them. <laughs> he dared me. He double dared me. Hey, hey, hey. If you're going to fight, now fight fair. Take, take Kenneth in the house and make him presentable. And I'll thank you to leave this place at once and take that little ruffian with you. I'm sorry about busting up all those eggs. Well, you can't mend busted eggs, but your mother won't like your fighting very well. That is, if anybody tells her. You don't have to tell her, do you? No, I guess this is one time when we men ought to stick together. But what about the egg money that, that we didn't get? Well, maybe we can make up her egg money out of my chicken feed, huh? Put that gun away. It was assured it was you, and I'm not taking any chances. Those kids are creeping nearer all the time. I just saw another horseshoe on a tree, closer to the house. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw him. I'm not letting them come any closer. Yeah, but you didn't see me coming just now. You gotta be more careful. We can't take any chances at the last minute. John Hale's getting out of prison this week. Yeah? Now listen, you. I've fed you and helped you cool off a murder charge. Now I'm cashing in on you, see? With John Hale out of prison, they'll figure he's the one that's unloading. It's quite simple if you have four years' patience. First time since I've been warden, the prisoner's filled out his own official release papers. I've filled out many for others since I've been a trustee. I've waited a long time for my own. It's a pleasure to hand you this. You've been a model prisoner. You've earned your time off for good behavior. We're going to miss you around this office. Thank you. I can't honestly say I'm sorry to go. Warden, has my wife called for me yet? Here's a telegram that arrived about an hour ago. You can ride in the prison truck at the railway station. If you don't mind, I'd like to walk those few miles. It'll sort of get me accustomed to things again. I understand. Goodbye, Hale. Lots of luck. Thank you. You've been very kind. Gee, Mom, I wish we had company every day. He must be special company, taking two. Yes, Mr. Hale is special company. Your father and he were great friends when they were your age. You know, I don't think you'd remember John Hale. He's been away a long time. You mean that kid Kenneth Hale's father? Sure, I know about him. They put him in jail. Billy, don't you ever speak of that again. Well, he was in jail. Billy, when he gets punished for being bad, we don't keep on talking about it afterward, do we? No. Well, it's the same with Mr. Hale. We don't want to ever mention that he was in prison. I mean that he went away. That lady knows all about criminals and prison breaks and bandits and burglars. I'll bet he could tell some stories. Now you get that right out of your head. And don't you dare ask him about it. Well, suppose he mentions it. Can I listen? He won't mention it. 
And please stop talking about it. Well, can I ask Jeff and Tidge over just to see him? Billy, did you tell them about it? Well, we only talked about it, and I've got Jeff's knife for letting him look at Mr. Hale. Don't you understand that Mr. Hale is not a curiosity? Oh, all right. I won't say... It's the truck. Here they come. Well, this is a surprise. We didn't expect to see you. What's Mom mean, surprise? We expected him. Oh, it's, uh, it's like a surprise party. Oh. This is a great day for me, Martha, as you can imagine. It's very kind of you to take me in this way. We're mm. certainly glad to see you. Ah, oh, he doesn't even walk with a prison lockstep. I'm going to get my knife back. That's what I'm going to do. And for what we are about to receive, let us be truly thankful. Amen. John, when you show up unexpectedly like this, you'll have to take pot luck. Well, if this is part luck, I can't imagine what it would be like if I were really expected. Mr. Hale. <clears throat> what is it, Billy? I was only going to ask him if he remembers me when I was little before... before he went away. Well, you can talk about that some other time. Your father and Mr. Hale have some things to talk over. Why, of course he remembers you, Billy. In fact, he doesn't have to think back very far to the time when we were youngsters ourselves, right here together. We were both just about your size. I bet Billy's doing the same things we used to do. Yeah, sure. Remember how scared we were of the old haunted house down by the swamps? Why, of course. Don't tell me that's still there. Yes, yeah, sure. <laughs> and they're still scared about it. No, no. <laughs> Billy, pass Mr. Hale the applesauce. Oh, thank you, Billy. Boy, we haven't had such a layout of food on the table since Dad's birthday. I wish we had more parties. Billy, you know very well this is no special occasion. We were just hoping that Mr. Hale would drop by. Well, we were pretty sure the way you were working out there in the kitchen. I'm afraid Billy's given you away, Martha. But I understand. It was nice of you. It's going to make it easier for me to go home now. Golly, I'm certainly anxious to see my wife and boy. cost somebody forty dollars and thirty cents. Where do I get it? You wait here. I'll send a butler out to pay you. Just a minute. I'll do no waiting for fresh kids. I'll go right along with you. Stay where you are. I'll show you a new trick. Why, uh, Master Kenneth, you're supposed to be in school. Pay them up forty dollars. And thirty cents, Master Kenneth. It's a hold-up. It never costs more than forty dollars from school. Let me see the slip. Charge it. Charge it? Forty dollars and thirty cents? Yes, a charge it to the account of Mrs. Hale. Your mother is not at home. I know that. But you're not supposed to come home from school. Your mother left strict orders. Who cares? Cut out the preaching. Now get out there and tell the cook I'm hungry. I want a porterhouse steak, french fried potatoes, and a whole pie. And don't waste any time. Hurry up. Oh, Kenneth. Hello, Kenneth. Oh, it's you. When did they let you out? I came home today. Aren't you glad to see me? What for? Why do you say that? Because I never wanted to see you again. Ever. What are you doing here anyway? This is my home. This place belongs to Mother and me, and I don't want you around. Wait a minute, Kenneth. Why did you leave school? On account of you. I got in a fight because they kept saying my father's a convict. I see. Well. Can't we talk that over between us? I don't want to talk to jailbirds. You know, Kenneth, 
Maybe you don't quite understand. I don't want to listen to anything a jailbird has to say. You just tell a lot of lies. It's quite plain you haven't had much discipline since I've been away. You're a fine one to tell me about discipline. I do as I please. You know, Kenneth, that's exactly what's wrong with you. And maybe it isn't too late for me to correct it. The food will be ready presently for Master Kenneth. Never mind the food. He won't be eating here for some time. Please pack some clothes for the boy. Something suitable to wear around a farm. Master Kenneth is going on a trip with his father. You know, Kenneth, a shock to see that boy of mine. He's just itching for trouble. When Valerie gets a divorce, the courts may decide I'm not a fit person to raise him. But I'm still his father, and I'm going to use this chance to rub his nose in some good old country soil. Well, there's a lot of it around here. Who's the girl? That's my girl. What's your name? Her name is Julia Blaine. She live around here? Yes. You got a sister? Yes. She's good looking as Julia? I don't think so. Then I guess I'll take Julia. You better not try it. I think it's just the grandest thing to have you and Kenneth visit us for a spell. And Billy will love having a chum near his own age. Those two get along like two peas in a pod. <laughs> Oh, mercy me. I wonder what could have happened. That's your two peas jumping out of their pod. I just asked him a question, and for no reason at all, he jumped on me. Billy, I'm ashamed of you. Now, you apologize to your guests. I said apologize. Wait a minute, Martha. Maybe they know what the fight was all about. Now that it's over, why not let them shake hands? Well, that's better. Now you two get over there and fix up that bed. Go on, both of you. And Billy. Let this be a lesson to you. You just watch Kenneth a little closer. You can learn a lot of things from him. You must admit, Cal, it's very unusual for both boys to be out this late. You don't suppose something might have happened? Now, if you let Martha see that you're worried, she'll throw a faint. Just be quiet, and if they don't come home soon, I'll go out and look for them. Kenneth didn't tell you they planned anything special today, did he? No, no, Martha. They'll probably be just playing and forgot the time. Yes, yeah, sure. They'll be home when they get hungry. But they've never been this late for supper. Sure, Billy has. Remember the night he didn't come home at all? No, but that time he was sick and stayed over with Jeff. Oh, oh, my land. I wonder if that's what happened this time. <laughs> Martha, will you stop scaring me? Next thing you know, you'll think the boy right into a hospital. Calvin, you stop saying those things. Now I am scared. Billy. Now, Mother, I'll handle this. Well? Well, we're late. Well, that's some news. Come here. All right, now, why are you late? We stayed to dry our clothes. Well, well, have you started swimming with your clothes on? Now, Martha. Well, well, answer your mother. No, we fell in. You're yeah, trying to get Julia. Was Julia in swimming? No, ma'am. She fell in. Were you up on that swing over the water? No, sir. Julia was, and the rope broke. So we fished her out. Did she get wet, too? Yes, ma'am, but, but she's all right now. You mean you dried out her clothes also? Oh, no. We took her to a doctor. Quick. Why was she hurt? Mm, only full of water. 
But she's home now. The doctor took her home. We better go right over to the Blaines. Oh, no, sir. I guess maybe the Blaines don't like us so well anymore. Well, I don't wonder. All right, go on upstairs and get ready for supper. You told about Julia almost getting drowned, and we just promised not to tell about that. And we shook hands on it, too. Well, you told them first we fell in with our clothes on. Oh, don't try to get out of it. Next thing you know, they'll find out you're to blame. Yeah, so you can brag you saved her. Not if you keep your mouth shut. Oh, well, just remember, I won't give you that dollar if you tell. Oh, keep your old money. I told you I wouldn't take it. Just make sure that Julia doesn't tell. Oh, that's easy. She was unconscious. She thinks I did save her. Billy! Billy! Yes, Mom? Julia and her father are here. Mr. Blaine wants to talk to Kenneth. To Kenneth? Yes, Kenneth. Tell him to hurry down. Gee, I bet someone told on me. I hope not. Come on, you better go on down. Well, you come along. All right. I'm home before it's dark. But thank heaven this girl's life. He's a hero. Well, that's the greatest... How do you believe it? They never told us that. Well, that's the news to a hero to keep it a secret. But this little girl told me how your boy Kenneth dived into the water and saved her life. And I wish to express my appreciation. Here is something that I've carried with me for over 30 years. Something that I've been mighty proud of. My father gave it to me on a special occasion, too. And now is a good time to pass it on to a boy who will someday be a great man and a credit to his father. I believe it's a custom in rewarding a hero to give a banquet in his honor. So if you'll all step into the dining room, I'll serve supper. What happened to Billy? Oh, I don't know. He went upstairs. Now, isn't that just like him at a time like this? You make him come right down to supper. Sure. When Julia fell in the water, where were you, Billy? I was just there. Hmm. Well, you know, son, I've been wondering, if Julie were only near drowning, how could she remember all the details that she told her father? Oh, I don't know. I, I guess she remembers. I see. Well, what do you remember? Nothing. Well, look, if Kenneth did all the rescuing, how did your clothes get wet? Oh, Dad, let's forget about it. Don't ask me any more questions. Can't expect me to remember everything. Okay, son. I'd rather have you stand by and see the other fellow get the honor. But you and I know how it really happened. And maybe it'll give Kenneth something to live up to. Hey, listen to this. The bandits' getaway car leaped forward in a storm of shrieking bullets. The piercing clatter of machine guns shattered the air, sending a rain of terror and chills into the hearts and spine of frightened people who screamed at the horrible sight and fled in stark horror as the death cars thundered by like fiery streaks at lightning speed, leaving a smoking path of doom and destruction. Oh boy, here's something good. For one agonized, ghastly moment, fate trembled breathlessly and then grinned gloomlessly as red-hot lead smashed its way into the vitals of the murderous, escaping fugitive. Mm, listen to this, it's a pip. The hail of G-man bullets swept the fleeing bandit's car from end to wind. The car leaped the curve and crashed into the ravine below, bursting into flame while the doomed gangsters shriek with their dying breath. Crying does not pay. These stories are swell elegant. They give you the creeps good. 
Ah, uh, they're not so hot. I've heard better ones lots of times. What could be better than G-men fighting bandits? That ain't nothing like soldiers fighting Indians. Indians aren't nothing to fight. They only got bows and arrows. When I get big, I'm going to be a G-woman and maybe capture the worst bandits in the world. Hey, you know what? I heard Pop saying last night that if you don't quit reading that junk, he's gonna lambaste you until he makes a lady out of you, like Julia. You wouldn't know I was reading them unless you told them. Not me. I ain't no tattletale. Here, hold it. I got something important to do. Miss Jerry, go on. Take it home. That'll go on. not to hear me. I've been hunting for you an hour. You better not try getting away from me this time. What do you want? You wait and you'll find out. I know all about my dad giving his watch to Kenneth. Well, what of it? You can't fool me. I saw Kenneth let Julia fall in the water, and I guess I saw you pull her out. And that coward Kenneth, he was scared. My dad should give you the watch. Well, we promised to keep it quiet. I'm sick of hearing my dad tell what a great hero Kenneth is. Well, I almost told him this morning. I can't stand it much longer. Well, then put some picking plaster on your mouth. And I would if you'd stop mooning about losing Julia to Kenneth. I don't care anything about Julia. She's writing notes to her hero now. Well, I read it, too. You keep out of this. I will. My plan don't work. What are you scheming? I'm going to have one of those campfires tonight, down near the cave. Oh, who wants to hear any more of your old ghost story? You're going to hear this one, and so is Kenneth and his Julia. I'm going to tell him a story about the haunted house. Then, I'll dare him to go in. What'll that get you? It will show Julia that Kenneth's got a yellow streak right down the middle of his back. That's why. And if she wants him, she can have him. Suppose he does take your dare. And then if he goes in the haunted house, and never comes back... That's what makes me think we got something. It was years and years ago, when the house first got haunted. An old miser used to live there. His wife and his ten children got hungrier and hungrier, account if he wouldn't buy them anything to eat. One night, his wife sneaked down into the cellar. He caught him. Counting his gold! Gosh. Just listening to it makes me feel my hair standing right up on end. I'm scared. Don't tell any more. Oh, don't be scared. That's just a story she's making up. That's what you think, but wait till you hear it all. Maybe you don't know what makes bats as blind as bats. Just looking at ghosts makes bats as blind, blind as bats. Well, go on. After the miser buried his wife in the cellar of the haunted house, he took all ten children out into the swamp. And he came back alone, laughing and screeching like a fiend. The gold is mine. I'm mine. <coughs> then that night, something down in the cellar. Something was moaning and wailing and sort of sobbing, too. His first hoped it was only the wind. But then he heard a woman going, Where's my baby? Where's my baby? Then he heard something scratch on the door. Days later, when they found.
found the old miser in the haunted house. He was one of the deadest men that ever lived. I suppose you believe that tripe. Oh, you think it's tripe, hey? Then you never heard about the tramp who went into the haunted house to sleep. And when he woke up, he was dead, too. The ghost had eaten him alive. Rubbish. That's crazy. There is no such thing as ghosts or spooks. And besides, they're supposed to be disembodied creatures. So, ghosts can't eat. Oh, they can't, can't they? Well, these ghosts died starving. And they're still hungry. Why, even a dog's afraid to go in. And frogs won't croak near this haunted house. Well, that's how frogs get Popeye, watching for ghosts. Well, I, uh, I'd go, go in myself, only Pop would lambaste me if I did. Nobody around here is brave enough to go in. Well, I wouldn't be afraid. Maybe people around here aren't as smart as you. Oh, I'm not baby enough to be frightened by ghosts like some people. If I wanted to go in the haunted house, I'd go. I guess you're just talking. You're afraid to. Huh. You can't scare me. Yes, over there, go on. Horseshoe, and that's mine. I'll take both the horseshoes and make a real record. I'll hang them right down the cellar of the haunted house. I'll show you there's no ghost. Working the night. Now, put that away. I'm not taking any chances. I'm going to use this if they get close enough to see me. Wait. We'll scare them some other way. Get those chains. Terry bad? Maybe they scratched his eyes out. Same as they do human beings that go in there. Well, I'm going in. And you want to come along? Well, I'd go myself. Somebody's got to stay here and protect the women. You've got to be brave to do that. I'll stay. Keep them away from here for a long time. Well, I did it. Oh, anybody could have done that. Well, he was so scared he would have jumped out of his shoes. Right there in the porch. Only they were tied on him. You didn't put the horseshoes where you said you would. Well, I heard something. Sure you did. That's ghost. Oh, that's silly. There is no ghost. Why'd you get scared and run away? And you dropped the horseshoes, too. Well, if you're so smart, why don't you go as far as I did? Yes, Mr. Smarty, why don't you? Billy's not afraid of anything. Then why don't he go in? I think I will. If Billy wanted to, he'd go right down in the cellar without stopping. That's just what I will do. You haven't got the nerve. I dare you. I double dare you. All right. 
Well, I'll go up on the porch and, and get the horseshoes and, and take them right down to the cellar. And, and I'll put my head at the cellar window so you can all see me. If you do, Billy, I'll go with you. No, i better go alone. Well, if you go, I'll go to the porch with you. a bit scared, were you? Well, I went in, didn't I? That's more than Kenneth did. I was so afraid you'd get hurt. Oh, there was nothing to be scared about. I always knew that someday I'd go in. I, I was only saving it so you could see it. Kenneth was afraid to even go in the door. You just cooked this stunt to show me up. There's no ghost in there, and I'm not afraid. I'll go in your own haunted house tomorrow and take it apart. If you want to see a real show, just stand out in front while I throw the ghosts out to you one by one. I guess now you kids will believe me. There's no such thing as ghosts. Hey, look, this board's loose. I stepped on it last night. And here's where we both fell down. And that was no trick. Anybody can do that. Come on, Julie. I'll, I'll show you where I threw the horseshoe. Here's what makes a ghost noise. 
Where's the whole cot bed? I suppose you dumb kids believe that ghosts never sleep. A razor. And I suppose they shave. Look, it's red. And it's fresh. Gosh, it is fresh. Look, a chain. If it ain't the ghost, it, it, it must be somebody that makes the noises. I, I, I'll bet they use this place as a hideout. If they come back and find us, they'd make ghosts out of us. That's what they'd do. And I don't want to be anybody's ghost. Somebody's been living here and just don't want us to find out. Will you stop following me? I guess I can go anywhere you go. Cigarette butt. Somebody's been here lately. Hey, look at this. What is it? L.I. Securities Corporation. Gold bond, $1,000. Money? It's worth $1,000. Say, this sounds like my father's company. Yeah? But don't forget I found it. Okay. But keep it a secret. We can sell this. Then I want my cut. What do you mean, your cut? I want my share of the loot. Okay, if you keep your mouth shut. Cross my heart and hope to die. I promise. But I want my cut. There may be some more. You look over there. They got me. Will you stop following me? Can I have some privacy? Not till I get my cut. Well, how can I give it to you until I sell a bond? Then let me keep it. I found it. No, you might lose it. That bond is worth a thousand dollars. That's why I'm going to watch you. If you were a man, I'd knock your head off. If I were a man, you couldn't knock my head off. Now go away! If you haven't learned about his being here, in another month, I'd have turned back to you the kind of boy you thought he was. Well, his uh, letter to me was proof that you used prison discipline. I think you'll change your opinion when you see him. What in heaven's name happened to you? How did you ever get so dirty? Well, think up a good one. We were... Uh, playing. Just playing. Well, you run along and get cleaned up. Change your clothes. Mother's going to take you away from here. What? What? But, Mother, I don't want to go. There's something very important I must do here. You said it. Now, say goodbye to your little friend and do as I say. Well, so long. I gotta go now. Over my dead body. Pidgey, what are you doing? Pidgey, Martha, can't you stop it? Look, Pidgey, will you stop it? Come on, 
This is one of the bombs they claimed I stole. Where'd you get this? You're asking me? You ought to know where you hid them. Don't you understand, son? You must tell me. Well, I mustn't tell you anything, must I, Mother? I resent your putting Kenneth to the third degree. We've suffered enough notoriety, and I don't propose that he shall be made a further victim. I know where all the rest of the bombs are hidden. I had my hands on a whole armful of them, and I hid them where no one will find them. And I won't talk. Not until I'm offered a reward. A good, big, fat reward. Listen, son, you can't leave me. I won't let him get away. Now, you let me handle Kenneth. Valerie, please don't take that position with the boy. Uh, just a minute, please. If you'll all be quiet, I'll question this boy in an orderly manner. No wonder the poor boy says things like that. You've got him all excited. Now, run upstairs, dear. Now, after he's uh, cleaned up and dressed, I'll have a quiet talk with him in a less excitable manner. He doesn't know what he's saying now. You know, I think I can solve this mystery. All the other youngsters, including my boy, were with Kenneth wherever he found the bonds. So let's question all the children one at a time. That's a good idea, Cal. But in the meantime, I'm not going to let Kenneth out of my sight. Now we got a pretty job to find out who took them and where. What? Oh, Hank. What do you got there? What do you got in that bag? Nothing, not a thing. You let me go. Take it easy. Are those the securities? Are they all there? Ow. Oh, come on. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, come on. Watch. Oh, hurry. Shut up, kid. Keep your mouth closed. I told you we'd get caught. We got this. Now we'll tie this kid up so he can talk. Get that rope. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, a bit of luck that it should be this kid. It's his father who served the time in jail for stealing those bonds. Yeah, that is lucky. When they find this kid here, they'll figure his father sent them here for the stuff. Hey, what are you thinking of? I'm not going to have any more on my hands. Go on in the house. Hurry up. Make some noise. A lot of noise. I'll stay here and help Kenneth. All right. Come on, you rats. We got you covered. 
The game's up. Come out of there one at a time with your hands up. This rope was cut with a knife. Yeah, and the bag is gone. Wait a minute. Dead. I must have choked him. Come on out of there. So he come in and cut you loose. Come on, come on out. Go on, you too. Well, kid, you just came up here once too often. You brought it on yourself.
Here they are, John. Billy. Billy. Billy, are you all right? Billy! You... Cal, we've got to get him out of here quickly. Oh, yes, take his shoulders, John. up there doing everything possible. And I was even taking the bonds for myself. Father, I didn't understand then what that would do to you. That's all cleared away now, son. Shh, quiet. Mother, quiet. how is Billy? The doctor just removed the bullet. And he's very much improved. Now, I think if you're all very quiet, Billy would like to have you up there to see him. Oh, Daddy, I ain't now, wait a minute. Not so noisy. I think it's best if you go up one at a time. Remember, Billy's still a pretty sick boy. Oh. Well, you let Kenneth go first. Harry, he's alive! <laughs> John, I was just thinking, if I should take a place here in the country with our boy, would you come to visit us? Yeah, that's enough, Terry. Come along. <laughs> Julia's father made a mistake when he gave me this watch. It belongs to you. Gosh. If I didn't see him do it with my own eyes, I never would have believed it. I'm always going to be your girl. Over my dead body. 